It says in Luke 9.23, Whoever wishes to be my follower must deny his very self, take up his cross each day, and follow in my steps. We have seen a lot of strange, miraculous things happen around the time that we humans call Lent. I remember years ago when I was a speaker for Gideon's International. I would go into many different kinds of churches and speak on behalf of the Memorial Bible Fund. One time I was doing this during Lent, and I saw a lot of people giving up various things. It was a fast from something people enjoyed and wanted in their lives. It was a denying of oneself so that they could become more aware of God. Well, perhaps, my friend, there is a higher spiritual principle involved here. I remember one man standing up proudly in one church saying that he was giving up a hobby that he loved for Lent. He said that he was going to work harder, stay longer hours at work, and do everything that displeases him for a full 40-day period. He said that he was going to do this for the glory of God. People often give up various types of food for 40 days of fasting before Easter. Can you think back on your own life? What have you given up for Lent? A German proverb states, to change and to change for the better are two different things. Well, this year, I ask you to go the extra mile spiritually for Lent, to be changed. Are you changed if you give up a hobby that you love? Probably not. You'll probably be worse after the 40-day period because you haven't had the relaxation that you need. Often, all you've had is additional stress. Lent is not a period to beat down the human being to allow the spiritual to come through you. To really let Lent happen in you, you have to exalt the human being and allow God to come through every cell and every thought of your body temple. How else can this be? If you are not a good human being, you're not a good channel as a child of God and you want to be a good child of God. You have passion for life to be a child of God. You have passion to have a better life tomorrow or after the 40-day period than you had at the beginning. That's why you're watching this at this ministry. You are here in this ministry because you believe in God. You have faith in God's wonderful, almighty power, and you have felt it many times. I pray that you feel God's presence this day. I pray that every time that you watch one of these sermons, that you feel something spiritually special that makes you feel energized all week long. I pray that you get what you're seeking and more than you're seeking, and that's the way God is. We all come here with challenges. I pray that most are small, but some face big challenges. God can meet and help with every need. We come here for divine solutions, and in that, we will not be disappointed. There are always fleas in life, but we have to concentrate on the dog. The first thing we do is pray. We don't know how our exact problem is going to be solved, but we enter into that silence of prayer and God's power comes into our awareness. And when God's activity comes through you, it works out a hundred times better than you ever dreamed it could. You feel a hundred times better than you thought you could. You and I are in awe of the miracle that has taken place. It is the activity of the divine. We are here today because we realize that God's spiritual activity works. You know it works. You turn to God's presence and you just look at what happens. The miraculous is manifest in our lives. But what if you and I turn to that power a little bit longer than usual? More than an hour's time on a particular Sunday morning. 
more than prayer times in the morning. Perhaps we could get a system of thought and we could be on track, on the right track for 40 days and 40 nights and create a portal in our mind and body for permanent spiritual change. Could you imagine if you didn't have anything negative going into your mind or your physical body temple, the temple of the living Lord, for a whole 40 days? Just think if you were to feed yourself a vitamin that is spiritual, and cleanse and renew yourself so that you would not have one negative thought during that whole time. Why, your whole mind would be a vessel for the living God. Your eyes would be picture windows that would only enable you to see the good, not to judge or to criticize, but see with the beautiful perception of God. Your ears would cut through the gossip, criticism, and the lowly forms of human communication that you often hear. And instead, you would hear a melody of harmony of the universe. How beautiful is that? Well, I tell you, my friend, it is possible, but it takes discipline. Following Jesus Christ is a discipline. How do we follow him? Well, we don't put on tennis shoes or jeans and walk down a certain path in town. No, we follow with our thoughts and then our actions. And we do not do it just during our prayer times. We do it all the time. I invite you during the next 40 days, and if you're beginning on Lent, it will be Wednesday, March 9th, but you can begin any time to take this opportunity to change in our lives. We do not live out here in the environment that we call our worlds. We live in our minds. You take yourself with you wherever I go and wherever you go. What do I mean by that, taking yourself with you? Well, you take your thoughts, your mind. There is a moment in your life where you realize the activity of God is working. It is a sweet, loving, and a wonderful power that will never let you down. It will never forsake you. It will never criticize you or call you bad. God constantly wants to help you. Your world will not be determined by outer conditions. It will be determined by inner conditions. What we do during Lent is not a fast from outer things. It is a fast from lower thoughts inside of ourselves. Lent. It means L, let's, E, eliminate, N, negative, T, thinking. This ministry is here to serve you, and we're here to help you. To do what? To change your thinking. To do what? To make you a better Christian. To do what? To make you a religious symbol of this organization. You are our religious symbol. You take it with you wherever you go, and every time you open your mouth or smile at another person, you are the living cathedral of where you worship. For the next 40 days, you're going to eliminate negative thinking from your life. Imagine the bliss you're going to have. Imagine the freedom, and imagine that you have a smorgasbord in front of you with the best food in the world. But at the end, you had a little bit of poison. Well, every day, you would eat the good food, and you also sipped a little bit of the poison. Well, pretty soon, you and I would be sick. We might allow ourselves to do this for a while, but then there has to come a time and spring Cleaning is a great time to do this, not just to fast from one thing in life, but to totally change our thinking, to have this mind in you and in me that was in Christ Jesus. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need more than just church on Sunday morning. Lent requires that you change for the betterment of you. This is what you're giving yourself to, this process, and it's exciting. You're not denying yourself 
anything other than the poisonous thoughts that are hurting you. And you're going to take on the power of the Almighty. Have you felt bad lately? Have you felt out of sorts? Have you felt like you're just not totally with it? Well, perhaps you have a sickness in your mind and body, and my friend, it is time to be healed. It's time to cooperate with the healing action by keeping God's thoughts. Have you had any prosperity challenges in your life recently where you just can't meet the needs that you need to meet every day? Have you had times when you thought that you were going to get a promotion, but you didn't, and you wondered why? Perhaps it is the thoughts that you're thinking. We think that we keep a secret from everybody else when we're thinking negative thoughts, but no, we radiate them out to everyone. When we change our thinking, everyone feels a difference in us. They don't know why, but they feel something different coming from us. And in that moment, our relationship with them is changed. It's more positive and it's better. Are you having problems with some other person or persons in your life? Well, no matter how hard you try, you just can't seem to get along with them. You just can't understand because you've never said anything bad to them, but you think bad thoughts about them. And then they come into the room and you're just, you're just telling them off in your mind. You know some things about them, and they may have done some things to you, but you're not telling them with your mouth. You have a smile on your face. I ask you a question. Are you hurting them, or are you hurting yourself? You see, they're winning the argument, but there's not even an argument. Your thoughts about them are taking all your power away. You need to love them instead with every core of your inner being during Lent. It's the spiritual thing to do. Go and learn what the scriptures mean when they say, instead of offering sacrifices to me, Jesus says, I want you to be merciful to all others. I didn't come to invite good people to be my followers. I came to invite sinners. Matthew 9:13. Henry Longfellow said this, If we could read the secret history of our enemies, we would find that in each man's life, sorrow and suffering, enough to disarm all hostility. Here in the silence of prayer, we shall know the presence of God and see clearly just what we should go about living life in the way that that God wants us to live. We are now waiting the full understanding of this within our human minds. Living as God has planned, life becomes beautiful, and you can know just what God's plans are for you. And when you do, you will really be interested in living life more fully. Life will become a new, wonderful adventure. Well, there's more to this message, and I will share it with you in the next video. God bless you. Part number two. Many are just existing. How long has it been for you, seriously, since you've had a real passion for your own life and everything that's going on in it? Are you interested in your life? Are you totally alive in life? Are you waiting for the next morning with so much excitement that you can hardly sleep? Today is simply beautiful, and tomorrow there is going to be a serendipity come into our lives, the likes of which we can't even imagine. A good life is based part in opinion of it. The opinions we have of a given life at a given time sometimes lock us in a down attitude. 
The negative thoughts that we have held perhaps for 40 days too long could do this. Well, we need a mental house spring cleaning. This is a powerful time in our lives. Matthew 5, 1 and 2 says, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and he taught them. We know that on the first day of Lent, we have to go up on the mountain. We have to go above the crowd inside of our own mind. All those little voices that are telling us the negative things. Most of the voices are telling you things about how bad you are and how bad life is at a given moment. You have to rise above that and go and climb up on the mountain to the spiritual place inside of you. Everyone has a mountain inside of her or him. And you can climb up on that mountain any time that you desire to leave the chattering crowd below. You see them, and you like them still, but you're seeing them like you would see them out of the window of an airplane. They have no power over you anymore. You will look down from the window of your mind and think, my, aren't they little? And in time, perhaps even less than 40 days, you'll say, I can't believe how much power I gave them. I gave them all my power. It'll be a joyous time. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What is he saying? It's talking about being poor in spirit. There are many spirits and thoughts inside of you. Here is what I mean by that. There is a human spirit that's buying into all the little chattering voices. There is a human spirit that is so fatigued that it will hardly be able to get up tomorrow morning. It is so mad at everything that's happening in life that it is ready to quit its job. It's, it's ready to tell off its spouse. It's ready to end a friendship of years. It is ready, possibly because of disregard for self, to do something that is self-destructive. That's the spirit that, when we have success, wants to knock us back down again. But we are going to be poor in spirit. We're going to empty ourselves so that we can fill ourselves of the consciousness that has an awareness of God. Have you ever known someone that was so full of themselves that they were their own worst enemy? We're going to rise on that mountain and be high, not in our own selves, not in an ego way, but with the Spirit of God. We are going to allow Lent to be a concentration of turning away from our lower selves. And we're going to dedicate our Lenten experience to turn away from our human thinking that has gotten us into trouble so many times and to turn to the presence of Almighty God that is with us all the time. We are also going to turn away from the presence of our opinions of other people. We're going to see the child of God in them and we're going to relate to them in a whole new way. It's going to be a very silent building of spiritual power in us. And we're going to have renewed energy that comes little by little. And we're going to start to feel better spiritually every day. We have always been amazed at the power of prayer. But we are saying a prayer for the physical body and the physical body is going to respond. Theologians have thought a lot about this. When we eat, we don't feel like we're satisfied. Our hunger isn't satisfied instantly. The food has to go into our systems. It has to be fed into our bodies. We feel satisfied about a half an hour later. It's the same way with prayer. It's the same way with Lent. You will have a strong, silent activity working in you that will overcome whatever it is 
that you want to overcome, and God will not let you down. The Apostle Paul wrote, examine yourselves to see whether you're holding to your faith. We're going to spend a whole lot of time examining ourselves. Every thought that comes up in our mind, you know, they bubble up. Those old negative thoughts, examine those thoughts as they bubble up and make a conscious decision about them to be evicted permanently from the apartment house of your mind. First of all, we ask, is the thought true? Is it really true? Is it up to the God standard? Is it the way Jesus Christ would think? If not, let that bubble rise and go out from the atmosphere until it dissipates. It's no longer going to be a part of you. It's no longer going to poison you any longer. You're going to hold to your faith and you're going to know that God is with you as never before. You'll find within yourself the strongest power for good, the peace of the Christ. You find within yourself the greatest source of strength, the life of Christ. You find within yourself the most fulfilling source of joy, the love of Christ. You find within yourself the purest source of abundance, the essence of Christ. You find within yourself the truest source of direction, the light of Christ. You are not seeking something in your life that is wrong. You are seeking something in your life, I tell you. It will not be a fast from the things you love. It will be a fast from the things that are keeping you from getting all the things that you love. You are going to receive many of the ideas from God to lead you to your desires as you clear up your own human mind. Give up complaining, focus on gratitude. Give up pessimism and become an optimist. Give up harsh judgments and think kindly thoughts. Give up worry and trust divine providence. Give up discouragement and be full of hope. Give up bitterness and turn to forgiveness. Give up hatred and return good for evil. Give up negativism, be positive. Give up anger and be more patient. Give up pettiness and become mature. Give up gloom and enjoy the beauty that is all around you. Give up jealousy, pray for trust. Give up gossiping, control your tongue. Give up error, turn to virtue. Give up giving up, hang in there. And now, my friend, I ask you to pray with me. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Almighty Spirit, quickening my whole being, perfect in the revelation of thy Spirit in me. All my cells are absorbing energy, health, strength, new vitality from the power that dwells within me. Healing life flows through every cell, cleansing, purifying, and making me whole and well. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Dear, loving God, let the harmonizing power of divine love adjust all things perfectly as I move throughout this day in a divinely ordered way. Let me feel the peace of thy presence within me and all around me. Give us this day our daily bread. May I, dear God, Partake freely this day of the bread of life, the spiritual understanding that nourishes my soul. I give thanks that there is ample provision for my every need in body and soul. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. 
Dear God, let the forgiving love free me once and for all during Lent of all the unhappy memories of the past. I ask to be cleansed, calm the turbulent thoughts, enable me to see through the problems of personality, and make me a radiating center of love that shines forth to bless with understanding and compassion all others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear God, for the next days during Lent, free me from the temptation of negative thinking. Let thy presence with me guide me in controlling my thoughts and my words. I fear no evil as I let the Spirit guide and protect me and call to my remembrance all that is good. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Inside of me, during these next 40 days. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. My dear friend, thank you for watching our first sermon of Positive Church. Now, we do encourage you to attend the church of your choice, but for those that can't, or for those that are looking for spiritual nourishment, we offer these sermons to you that will be presented in a timely manner. Now, I ask you to take your love offering. As you receive, it's important that you give. Hold it in your hand and bless it with me. Dear God, I am a part of your good. I am a part of your good giving to others and helping others. I realize as I give this gift, I am a part of something bigger than myself. I consider it a privilege to give. And I give so now to positive Christianity, willingly and with great joy. In Jesus Christ's name, I bless this gift and I send it forth. Amen and amen. My friend, you can go to our website to click on donations to make your gift to Positive Christianity, or you can send it to Positive Christianity, Post Office Box 7993, The Woodlands, Texas, 77380. God bless you, and God bless your family.